this is a review of the KNF Concept Nano X variable ND filter. This is the ND8 to 128 version. I've avoided variable NDs for many years due to bad experience with poor quality versions that are likely to have problems with sharpness, colour casting, vignetting or the dreaded X shadow, right bang centre in the middle of the image. But these KNF concept filters have been really good, I'm really quite impressed. So I thought I'd review them today. I tend to use a lot of cameras, high-end Sony cameras that have ND filters built in. So I don't have a huge need for them. But I've recently taken a liking to the Sony Alpha range, small mirrorless cameras and there's no ND built in. So I need a filter. Rather than carrying a bag full of filters, I thought it was time that I gave a good variable another go. And KNF Concept kindly sent me these, the Nano X series. Nano X means no X. So that big, horrible X that you get with poor quality filters. They say this doesn't get that. Variable NDs work by having two pieces of polarizing glass that work. Or, well, one of them is fixed on the front of the lens and then the second piece rotates and allows more light or restricts the light and um, works that way. But when done badly, they can really suffer with that um, big X vignette right down the middle of the image. It's a bit of a pain in the arse. But these have been really good. I've been using them for a couple of months now. A lot of the videos you would have seen from me here in the woods with big wide apertures like this lens at T1.5 would have had a variable ND on there. I chose the ND8 to 128 version for my lenses. This was a conservative choice. KNF Concept do make variable NDs with a bigger range and other companies certainly do. You can get a variable ND from 0 to 2000 but in my experience the bigger the range the more aggressive the filter the more likely you are to get sharpness issues and colour cast and vignetting and that dreaded X cross shadow. So I chose 8 to 128 and I chose the Nano X range, which is their professional range, because I'm a professional, allegedly. Shipping wise, it gets delivered in this little cardboard box and it's packaged in its own plastic hard case, which is really quite nice, I thought. It has a piece of foam there and the filter wedges between the two sides of the hard case. Filters often get delivered in bits of fabric or leather pouches so I thought that was quite a nice touch, it feels solid, doesn't move around too much in there and it's well protected. The filter itself is very well made, it's relatively big and heavy, and solid, it feels good. I think we've all had I certainly have had poor quality filters in the past that are weak and thin and sometimes the threads are very poor quality and they wear out quickly. Sometimes it's, they're even so thin that just the lightest of touches compresses the thread and makes it difficult to remove them again. 
I've had none of those problems with this one. It's big and well made. It's big for a few reasons, I think. One is the end stops, which we'll come on to, but also it's been oversized for reducing the possibility of vignetting, would be my guess. So when you use it on a wider lens, it just adds to the high quality lack of vignetting problems. I did notice that this version, the 72mm and this particular lens, my lens cap doesn't always fit very well. Maybe that's more to do with Samyang than it is KNF concept. And also the lens hood doesn't fit over the front because it's so much bigger and you can't add the filter into the lens hood. So I have to ditch that. But that's not a big issue. I'd rather take a few inconveniences like that than have a poor quality filter. The end stops are a great added bonus, I think. The Nano X series is all about having no X, Nano X, no X. I guess that's what they're getting at. And due to the end stops, this goes from ND8 around to ND128 there, less than a quarter turn. One of the big problems with variable NDs is that they tend to have no end stops. So although this has been designed to go from ND8 to 128. With that end stops, you could easily push past to the equivalent of ND256 or whatever. And it wasn't intended to do that. So you could end up with that big X shadow. You might think, well, I'll just avoid it and only use the filter as uh, marked, but with our end stops, busy shoots, lots going on. Uh, yeah, easy to get knocked. You can easily go outside of the range and end up with the X on all your shots in post. This has been great. I haven't seen the X uh, anywhere, even at 128 in bright sunlight, which we don't have today. Up at the sky, there's no X visible. Brilliant. I'll really rely on those end stops. It's smooth to operate, but not too smooth and loose that it's likely to move out of place on its own, even on a slider or in a gimbal. It's likely to stay put, but you do have the reassurance of those end stops anyway. It's water resistant and scratch resistant. I've used it a few times in the rain with no issue. Scratch resistance. I don't really want to test here and ruin a good filter, but I've been using it here in the woods on my Coffee in the Woods series, pushing it through twigs and leaves, resting it on the ground with splashing water in gravel and mud with no problems. It still looks like new. Value for money is really good. They're just 50 or 60 quid, I think, depending on which one you go for. Compared to some of the other big brands, it's an absolute bargain. You can get variable NDs for two, three, 400 quid. Some with big, personalities and signatures behind them. I think you're paying for that because this has got no issues. It's it's really high quality. KNF have done a great job. Sharpness is fine. I've noticed no issues. Uh, a bit of flare in perhaps, but you're going to get that with every filter. Color cast, possibly a shift to the right, but minor, insignificant and you're going to be white balancing anyway, if you know what you're doing, or grading it out in post. But a very minor warm shift to the right, possibly. Vignetting, no problem, and there's no X, not even at ND128, due, I think, to 
the high quality glass for one but more importantly I think these end stops I really like those it's all round a great filter uh, happy to recommend it I'll put a link in the description uh, for an example in use you've got this camera that I've also stuck one on at the start of this video and also my coffee in the woods series take a look at that great VND I hope that's helped someone out. Out. Right.